Hi there. So in the previous clips, we introduced the electrical heart axis and concluded that it's best to use Eindhoven 1 and AVF to construct the electrical vector. Well, now we're going to recap why that is the best approach. Here is a printout of my ECG, which you can also see running in the background. Here we have Eindhoven 2. and Eindhoven 1 and there it is nice and clear but we're going to focus on the printout and let's measure the peaks of R and then project them onto the triangle so I'm just going to draw a baseline here and I'll measure this peak. This is 1.2. And this one here. Is 2.2. So then we take our Eindhoven triangle with the right shoulder here, left shoulder and foot. And this is one, and this is two, and then just reach up. So Eindhoven 1 was 1.2 and over here we had 2.2. So then we project these into the triangle. And there, if we join the two intersecting points, what we get is our electrical heart vector. So this has been constructed from the projections of one and two. But imagine now that you want to calculate the vector at all moments in time, and not just for the R peak like we've done here, but for all the peaks. So for example, for P, which is this one here, and T. So what you would need to do is that you would need to project all of them onto the triangle and all the other ones that I haven't shown here. And this is the outcome that you'd get it would look a bit messy and it would be quite awkward, especially given the fact that this isn't a standard coordinate system. So what we actually need is a proper Cartesian coordinate system with an X and Y axis. Well, let's see if we can make this happen. So Eindhoven 1 could, for example, easily act as the X axis there. But what about the Y axis? Well, let's go back and revisit the unipolar leads AVR, AVL and AVF. Now, remember that they are vectors whose negative input is calculated by taking an average between two electrodes. So, in terms of vector, this means that the base is between two electrodes and the tip points to that limb. So, let's take AVF for example. Now I'm going to quickly draw a base down here. I should construct this within the triangle, but to avoid making it a bit messier, I'm just going to project it next to it, just so you know and you don't get confused. AVF would be calculated 
by taking an average between my right and left shoulder, like you see here. And it would start from the tip of my nose. So somewhere here, for example, and then it would end down at my foot. So if I draw my line here next to the triangle, this gives me my Y axis. So there I have it, a proper Cartesian coordinate system with Einhoven 1 on the X axis and AVF on the inverted Y axis. And over here we have got my vector ECG. So what is great about this is that we don't only see the peaks of R but also of P, Q, S and T and therefore we can notice how my heart is electrically excited over time. And I'll just quickly make this a little bit bigger so you can see it more clearly. Now, an experienced consultant can see all the different angles of P, Q, R, S and T just by looking at the ECG. Well, the good thing is that you can learn how to do this as well, because we have created a new app which is specially designed for this reason and which you can find on our webpage. So please check our webpage and have a look and see what you think. Thank you.